welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. It's a great day here at Bible Tracks Incorporated. I hope that you're having a great day. If you can, stop right now and let's meet together around the Word of God. My Bible is sitting open once more to the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16. The Gospel of Mark in chapter 16 all this week and spilling over into next floor, dealing with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 16, please, if you can. Well, what do you think about the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead? That has been our focus all this week, and as I said, it will be going into uh, not only the rest of the week, but next week as well. I I want you to, to today and tomorrow to begin to latch onto three words. Let me give you these three words. They all begin with the letter A. They are this, anchored, ajar, and away. Anchored, ajar, and away. You see, these are the three positions that various people wanted Jesus's tomb, the stone over the tomb, to be in. Jesus's enemies wanted the sepulcher stone anchored, unmoved. The women who came to anoint the the body, they wanted the the stone moved, but not totally taken away, not that far. They just simply wanted the stone ajar. But but why? Uh, Finally, my friend, God has a concern about that stone as well. He doesn't want it anchored or just ajar. He wants it all the way away. Join me here. Let's look at that stone in Mark chapter 16. We began dealing with this stone yesterday. We'll talk about it again tomorrow, but I am interested in your feedback on the broadcast about this stone that we're talking about here, the stone that was the door to Jesus' tomb that, praise the Lord, is now empty. Uh, At the end of the program, I'm going to encourage you to text message me. I'm going to give you the text messaging number now as well as near the end of the broadcast. But text me the word gospel to the number I'm going to give. And when you do, I'll begin to ask you some simple questions, four of them, in fact. And they require minimal amount of response by you, but your response will help us. You can even, by the way, ask questions if you'd like. Let me give you that number. You can text me the word gospel to area code 708-515-4086. I'll give it again near the end of the broadcast, but let me give it one more time now. Text me the word gospel to area code 708-515-4086. My friend, in my hand is one of the tracks that we publish here that's geared towards children, towards elementary age young people. It is entitled, Are You Afraid? Are You Afraid? Dear friend, young people today are afraid of many, many things. We talk about them here. They're afraid of strangers and death and storms and animals and divorce. And that's the beginning of the list. We confront that young people need not be afraid if they know Christ. We take one verse of Scripture, we explain it to them and how that it applies to them and their fears along the way we share the gospel in this track. Are you afraid? Would you let me send you this track? I want to send you this track as part of a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. When I get done in Mark chapter 16, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you some ways by which you can give us your name and address. And when you do that, we will send you out free of charge a sample packet of all of our English tracks included, and it will be this one, Are You Afraid? If you work with children, here's a great gospel track for you to use in your ministry. 
Mark chapter 16. On yesterday's broadcast, I read just verse 4. Let me come back and do that again today. Mark 16, verse 4, the women come to the tomb, and it says in verse 4, and when they, the women, looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. On the broadcast yesterday, I spent time looking at uh, the enemies of Jesus and their desire to keep that stone, uh, that covering stone of the sepulcher entrance. They wanted it kept in place. They wanted it anchored. You know how they set a guard to the tomb. Remember that? You know how they got Pilate to put a Roman seal on that door? You remember that part of the story as well. All of this to, uh, was done to prevent Jesus' body from coming out of that tomb. Now, either because he would come out because he was alive or because the disciples were going to steal him away, the enemies of Jesus could not afford for that body to be out of that tomb. So they took some steps of bold action. And as I said last week, praise the Lord, the enemies of Jesus Christ give us great certainty that Jesus really did die. Mark 16 opens with these women coming to the tomb. Their goal was to anoint the body of Jesus. His body was dead in their minds. The idea of the resurrection had not even come into their thinking. Some of the women who came had seen Jesus die. Some had followed Joseph of Arimathea as he put Jesus into that sepulcher. They saw Jesus entombed in the grave. In their mind, Jesus was dead. They had come to to come. They they had already learned to come to grips with the reality that their loved Savior was dead. But they did not want uh, their dead Savior to smell bad. That would not do well for his lifeless body to stink. So the Jewish people, remember, they they did not embalm their dead at that point in time. They simply buried them quickly and, and put a lot of spices on the corpse. Now, all these ladies really uh, needed was the door to be open enough to get them in. They wanted the door ajar. The enemies wanted it anchored. These women, just they, they just wanted a jar. These ladies frankly remind me of many people, supposed Christian worshipers today. Uh, they, these kind of people, they go to church regularly. They go, in essence, to make Jesus smell pretty. But they don't want their lives uh, like, they don't want their lives to, to be impacted by a living Jesus. They, li- they like Jesus to be uh, dead and away from them. They, they, do- they don't want to live their lives in the power of the resurrected Lord. They frankly, most of them are not saved, or if they are honestly saved, they don't want to be distinct from the lost people. They want to have one foot in heaven and one foot in the world. Jesus' friend arose to prove that he is not only has power to defeat sin and death, but that he, he wants to come and give enable you and I to live daily lives in the power, in the power of his resurrection. He wants us to use his resurrected power. Jesus wants us to live victorious lives. He wants us he wants us to be free from not just the penalty of our sin but also he wants us to live free from the dominance of sinfulness in our lives. You and I can live lives free from the power of sin running us. We want the Holy Spirit to be controlling and running us, don't we? We say we do. We can live lives free from sin's dominance in our thought life. Men don't have to live lives controlled by lustful thoughts. Women don't have to live lives controlled by bitterness. People don't have to live lives with suicidal thoughts. We have a risen Savior. He's not just in the world today. He is in us who have owned him as our Savior. We can live in the power of his resurrection. Alcoholics, drug addicts, 
anger dominated people, people who have inherited family sin traits of whatever kind it is can be set free from these sins because Jesus is alive from the dead. He lives inside of each born again person. Do you know the risen Lord? Is he Lord in your life or only a nice, nice, sweet smelling Jesus that you want to keep tucked away for your Sunday worship? You want to keep him nicely tucked away for your, well, your holidays and Christmas pageants and and Easter cantatas, but you don't want Jesus to be messing with your life and causing you to have to separate from sin. You've fallen in love with your sin. Now, dear friend, if you have sin dominating in your life, you're not going to be an effective soul winner. If you're listening to me right now and you know the gospel and you say, I, I want Jesus as my Savior, but I'll never conquer this sin. Absolutely right. You won't conquer it, but if you come to Christ and receive him as your Savior, his power then becomes resident in you. He gives you the enablement. It's called grace. The grace of God is his gift of the power and the want to <laughs> to overcome sin. Oh, friend, come to Christ just as you are. Receive him as your Savior. Receive the freedom from the penalty of sin and then look to him. He gives you access into this grace, Romans 5 says, that you may have the grace to conquer sin on a day-by-day basis. Let me stop right here. Uh, it's time for you to consider text messaging me. Tell me what you think about the broadcast today. Are you one that just wants to keep Jesus nice and, and, and smelling good but don't want him dominating your life? Oh, friend, what a sad way to live. Why don't you text me the word gospel to the number I'm about ready to give again here and tell me what you think of the broadcast. Then I'm going to put a capstone on the things I've said. Text me the word gospel to area code 708 708- Five one five forty eighty six seven zero eight five one five forty eighty six. Now, dear friend, we talked yesterday about, about the fact that people that want that that door, that stone unmoved, they want it anchored. They're the enemies of Christ. But there's a lot of religious people. They just want the door of the tomb ajar a wee bit. They want to keep Jesus smelling pretty but they really don't want Jesus to uh, shake up their life. Either way, you have a bad, you have a bad idea of the resurrection. You really don't want a savior. You really don't want to have forgiveness of sin because you see, it's your sin that nailed Jesus to the cross, but yet you want to play games with your sin. You want to, you, you want to coddle your sin and your friend, you don't understand the need of a Savior if you want to coddle sin. If you have sin dominating in your life, we'll be glad to help you with that. Your pastor will be glad to help you with that. But you've got to decide that you're going to give Jesus Christ the reins of your life. Make him Lord and say, come and conquer the sin of my life. I'm going to live a life that's bold. I want to live a life for Christ in the power of his resurrection. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.